crafting simulation degenerates, assemble yourselves. We've got a new way to spend 40 hours chopping down trees and mining for ore, this time featuring dragons. This is Drago Noka, a casual farming sim where you develop a village on the back of a dragon. Our dragon is known as the almighty, the all-powerful, Grant. The player character is an amnesiac, and in this world, all human villages exist atop of dragons that travel the lands. Legend of Korra fans, does this sound familiar? Comment below how much you'd like to be squeezed between Korra's biceps. <laughs> As to the gameplay, it's every farming sim you've ever played for the most part. Chop down trees for wood, mine rocks for stones and various ores, shovel for clay, catch some fish, build homes, plant and water seeds, raise livestock, and craft every basic item from the bottom up. There's no buying paper here. You're gonna go chop down some trees, powderize that wood into pulp, and about 20 processes later, you'll have paper. Fun. I say that, but I'm a broken human just like you that gets excited at the prospect of gathering twigs to make a torch, to get more ingredients to then make it a campfire, and I may or may not be referencing Don't Starve, which we recently streamed on the channel, and we featured all the I Dream of Indie ladies, so if you haven't showed up to live streams, what are you doing? Stop it. Come by. In addition to all this manual labor, you'll be inviting people to the island to create a proper village. Specifically, you need to invite specialists. These specialists range from blacksmiths to fishers, and each expands your ability to craft new items and discover more about the land. Drago Noka gifts us with two options per specialist to invite to live on the island, which tended to be girl or boy, or I should say, waifu or random anime dude. So, of course, I picked the bra-wearing, booby blacksmith waifu over generic fire emblem looking dude number one. And the final mechanic I want to touch on is the ability to upgrade Grant the Dragon by feeding him to boost his speed, and you can equip him with weapons when he fights the nefarious giants that also travel the world. And that about covers the game's core mechanics, and honestly this game on the surface checks off every box for me. I also really love the 2D pixel art, it's well done, and the assets are detailed, and it even has a plot! But I wouldn't be dragging out my opinion this long if there weren't issues. For starters, I personally found the music painful to listen to. In fact, it made me want to carve my ears out of my head with a spoon. This was not helped by the equally awful and piercing sound effects, which blasted me over and over at the start of the game as I was leveling up my skills. For every level gained in a skill, you get a blast of trumpets and an anime fairy girl pops out of the side with a white flag to celebrate your accomplishment. And those first 10 levels of every skill, of which there are many, are pretty easy to breeze through which resulted in essentially back-to-back -back trumpeting as I tried to get enough wood to build flooring or walls. Or how about a different issue? The extremely fast respawn rate of the resources on the map. Never in my life did I think I would find myself annoyed at having lots of resources. But when you're trying to build homes and design a village, and feed a dragon, and raise pigs, and grow crops that have to be rotated because the soil loses nutrients, and expand your house to fit all the upgrade machines but random trees grew right next to your house overnight. It becomes hard to balance all of these tasks and also keep your land looking neat. And how about what frustrated me the most? The controls. What the ever-living fuck was going on with the controls and their naming? What's the sub key? And what are the key bindings? I gave the options menu a visit to figure this out, as I was stumped after the brief intro on how to do just about anything in the game. But then I discovered that the options menu only lets you rebind the keys. There's no breakdown of the preset key bindings on keyboard or controller, nor an explanation of what the keys meant. I won't discount that maybe I missed a button prompt somewhere that would have broken down these controls, but I know at least from my experience and also after reviewing my gameplay footage that 
This was never explained. And finally, I'll leave you with a list of questions that came up during my playthrough. For instance, why does the game start by playing dial-up modem sounds followed by text reading installing dragon extermination program? Why does the priestess girl feed her dead father in a coffin to a dragon? Why do they name the fairy me me me? <laughs> Why do all the roofs I place look so messed up? How big do villager houses need to be? Whose idea was it to push the oars out of the cave to the stairs? Why can't I put this in full screen? And yet, why am I still playing? At its core, Dragonoka is a functional and cute farming sim that despite all its flaws, all my bitchin' and complainin', executes its core mechanics well. And if you push through the unclear intro and the unsure control prompts, you get exactly what a farming simulation lover is looking for. Pretending you're a self-sufficient and financially secure person, plus dragons.